that's the that's the carburetor basically. This is the carburetor and this knob packed together with this battery is a really crude voltage divider that gives this a signal that regulates the flow into the machine. Ready? I'm rolling. Okay, so how does this thing work? Okay, so the first thing we do is we uh, turn the vacuum pump on and that's going to suck all the air out of the vacuum chamber. Can I do it? Yep. This one? Yep. So it's sucking the air out of this? Yes. Okay. And we um, have to do that because you're putting plasma in there? Yeah, the plasma has to be purely deuterium. Um, so it has to, uh, yeah, suck out all the How air. How long does that take? Uh, this will take about five minutes. Okay. Some technical notes, there are two different types of pumps on this pumping station. You have a rough pump, and that's kind of what most people think of as a vacuum pump, that's the yeah, louder. Yeah, be on this side for that. <laughs> so this uh, vacuum station has two pumps. There's a rough pump, and that's what most people think of when they think of a vacuum pump, and that's the louder of the two. Okay. And then this pump up here is called a turbo molecular pump, and that pump um, is the more advanced of the two, and that's what can take the system down to a very deep vacuum. And it is almost like a jet turbine. And you can hear it spinning up. Yeah. It'll get higher and higher. Where uh, did you pitch. find these parts? I bought this whole thing on eBay for about $1,000. But then I ended up putting in, you know, uh, close to four grand and refurbishing it and getting it up to spec. So between all of this and the warehouse, it came out to 40 Yeah, for the whole project. So far. Yeah, you're about to go for a lot more. <laughs> Just bought these the other day. What? These cap this capacitor bank. Hey, how much was this lady's mirror? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, $3. <laughs> this is a pretty high power capacitor bank. And this will allow us to generate brief but very intense pulses of electricity. Extremely brief. Yes. Okay. Like billions of a second? Uh, well, I, you know, that's a good question. It depends on the resistance of the medium you're discharging through. Um, so. There's a little bit of resistance in the system, uh, but probably millisecond discharge. Yeah. And what's this? Uh, this is the high voltage power supply. So this is what we're using currently to run the fuser, and that goes up to 30,000 volts. So you're using regular power to run this. Yeah, that, that plugs 50 into... 50% coal <laughs> to try to produce completely that's clean right, form of right. energy. Here. <laughs> that, that, Takes a, to run this machine takes about as much power as three 100 watt light bulbs. It's a 300 watt power supply. This is the next step of the project, and this is a very important step of the project because this is really what the project's all about. This is going to turn this into the Bussard reactor. That's correct. Okay. How? So um, at, when we get to the point, we're going to install this inside of the uh, chamber and in replace here. the Farnsworth fuser grid that's in there now. Okay. And, um, and that's what's new here. That's what's new. That's what's exciting. What is this made of? This is made out of Teflon. Okay. And it's put together with aluminum and screws. So it can withstand this kind of temperatures? Um, to, to a degree, this is not really... Uh, I don't expect this to produce fusion, uh, so the plasma energy is probably going to be tremendously high, but it certainly will stand up to this experiment. So the scaled-up version will be made of something else? Yes, it'll okay. have to be. What is it that has to happen to get you closer? You know, the surprising thing I'm finding with the research is a lot of times the limiting factor at this scale isn't money as much as it is waiting for parts. So as you're going, you realize what you need, and then you order the part. And, you know, a lot of these things have three months, or not three months, but a lot of these things have three week to one month lead times. Um, and that puts you out, you know, until you get the part. Right. You can't really take the next step. Then the part comes, and are you and always... Then the part comes... And you install the part, and you realize that you need a new part, or that that part wasn't correct, and you got to order a slightly different version. So this is ready to go, and this is, like, that's a pretty low pressure. So this is a pretty deep vacuum right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just open up the deuterium. So deuterium is the fuel that runs the reaction. Right. Um, and it's an isotope of hydrogen. And so that's the reaction that we're doing, is we're smashing two deuterium together, and it produces one of two branches, either a, tr a neutron and a helium-3, or a proton and a tritium. All right. So right now you're introducing deuterium into the chamber. Yep. Now we're ready to turn on the high voltage, so we're going to go back to the back of the room. I'm going to bring this remote activation stand. Okay, and over. we will set up the camera so that we can see what happens while right. we're gone. Yep.
What are you doing now? Uh, I'm just turning it all the way up and arming it. So now it's like armed, but it won't turn on until I lift that switch. And when it turns on, what happens? The uh, deuterium is... Well, it'll strike the plasma, and you, we can see it on the camera uh, view, viewer. So are you looking at the camera? Yeah, the viewfinder on the yeah. side? Okay. There it is. What are we seeing here? So that's a plasma. And it, it's, the hoop is high voltage negative, so it's ionizing the deuterium in there, and the positive ions are all rushing into the center okay. and colliding head on. So that's what gives you the, you know, when they do it enough times, you get the fusion. So we're looking at a fusion reaction? Yes, almost certainly. Uh, it starts instantaneously at a very low level, and the, as the purity of the deuterium as the chamber dries out over several hours, you'll get uh, a greater and greater fusion reaction.